Today we're talking about Facebook as a marketing tool. And for businesses focusing in consumer products or services, social networks like Facebook can be a great way to both find and market to their customers. And so if we talk about Facebook as a marketing tool, Facebook is the king of social networking today. Um, it's almost a necessity for companies to have a presence on Facebook in order to stay relevant with their target audiences. Um, the good thing for, uh, for companies is that Facebook is very marketer friendly. In fact, it's the, mar it's the friendliest social network for marketers to use, the easiest for them to use and the most effective for them to use um, when we're talking about consumer products. And so in this lecture, we're going to walk through how companies join Facebook, what they can do to communicate with customers organically. Um, we're going to come back to paid advertising in a future module. So today is all about organic advertising on Facebook. Um, and the first thing a company has to do on Facebook is set up an account. Um, it's very similar to how you or I would set up a personal account on Facebook. And then through that account, a company can set up a page. And a rule of thumb is that companies should not create a profile. Um, profiles are private and they're not used for marketing purposes. Pages, on the other hand, are public and they can be seen by anyone who has a Facebook account. And people can follow pages without giving companies access to their personal information. Um, because as you probably know, if you have a personal Facebook profile, if you connect with another profile, that connection allows both parties to see each other's private information. Um, when creating a page and following a page, the company cannot see the individual person's information but the individual person with the profile can see everything the company posts. So pages are the way to go for organic Facebook marketing. Um, and when creating a page, a company needs to customize every piece possible from the header photo to the description box um, to the address and phone numbers and mapping information that's available to companies to use. Uh, because the more complete a page is, the more likely a customer is to trust it. And when creating a page, it really should reflect the company's style and values. And it needs to mirror the brand standards that are used in other elements of the overall marketing plan. If it looks different than other branding or marketing materials, again, it's going to lead to a gap in trust with the consumer. So the more consistent the company stays with the Facebook page, the better. And once the Facebook page has been created, the social media manager for the company really starts to begin building content for that page. Now, I already said Facebook is easy for marketers to use, um, and it also is very easy for members to like, share, and become fans of pages, which is another reason why marketers love it so much. Um, but that means that the company has to work to create content that is share-worthy um, in the eyes of the consumer. And uh, this point just reiterates why it's so critical to understand the target audience because the end goal here is that you want your customers to share the content with their friends so that more people can see this information. Um, so the content really needs to be relevant and share-worthy. Um, and a lot of companies... Um, are posting a lot, right? So another key thing when you're posting content is don't post clutter. It's all about that quality over quantity that we've already discussed. Um, if you're just posting to post and it's not an effective message, you're going to become um, annoying on Facebook. Um, Facebook's a competitive marketing vehicle. Uh, we already said that a page is, ne is a necessity, so we know that a lot of companies are on Facebook and they're posting quite a bit. So you want to try to break through that clutter um, while not being an annoyance to your fans on that site. So it's quality over quantity. A few excellent, effective posts would be better than posting a dozen promotional posts or small posts that don't have a lot of content in them. Um, and the reason why we don't want to annoy our customers is because they can hide our page from their Facebook and um, it, then we won't show up on their newsfeed, right? And so once a customer hides your posts or hides your page from their Facebook notifications, they're very unlikely to unhide you. 
Um, so if you lose that customer with a couple of clutter posts, you're never going to get them back. So what you post is very important. So what should you post? Um, knowing that quality is more important than quantity, we have to focus on content that's relevant and engaging. And generally speaking, Facebook content should be light and funny while still being informative. So Facebook is not the place for um, serious uh, posting on a regular basis. Occasionally companies will use Facebook to post some very serious information about products or um, what's happening at the company, but generally speaking, Facebook content, content should be light and funny. Um, companies use Facebook for a number of reasons, but some of the biggest and most effective types of content uh, would be product usage tips. Um, companies will tell customers how to use the products by giving them examples of things that other people have done or things they recommend. Um, Facebook is a great place to ask open-ended questions that relate to the product or service you're promoting. Uh, we already mentioned in this lecture that um, companies use social networking sites to do market research, and so one of the ways they can get very specific research is by asking questions. Um, on Facebook, it's a great place to run contests um, and then offer discounts as well. And so these actions here, contests and discounts, can be directly related back to some of those social media goals that we discussed in Module 1 because you're actually getting customers to uh, complete an action um, to get to an, an end goal. So you have calls to actions when you are running contests and offering discounts. Um, on Facebook and generally all social media sites, but on Facebook specifically, it's recommended that companies include images in their posts. Uh, a Fast Company uh, article reported that including photos in your Facebook posts can increase your likes by 33% and your comments by 104%. So including an image is going to draw the customer's eye to that post and get more engagement. So now that we know what to post, what types of information works best on Facebook, let's talk about how often you should post. Uh, Social Bakers ran a study in 2011, and what they found, and you can see the chart down there on the bottom of that slide, was that companies are posting once or twice a day, um, and these are large companies. Um, and one thing to keep in mind is that a lot of the research that they did was on big successful brands and so these big successful brands because they are so well known they can get away with posting just one to two posts per day um, their posts are going to get very high engagement levels they're going to get lots of shares they're going to get lots of likes and so they're going to be spread throughout the social network community at a rapid rate um, and so therefore they only need one or two posts per day to be effective now um, social media today uh, is another social media resource that we use, um, reports that smaller brands should be posting three to five times per day um, in order to have that effective reach. So you're, again, this is your organic posting. So this is posting on Facebook on your page. Um, and if you're a smaller company or you're a local company that might be lesser known um, or needs to um, stay in the customer's mind and consideration set, posting a few times more per day um, is, is effective. Um, one thing to keep in mind, however, is that a study done by Buffer did find that engagement on Facebook greatly diminishes after the second post. And so that's why a lot of large companies don't post more than two times per day because studies do show that engagement goes down uh, pretty rapidly after your second Facebook post per day. So that tells us about how often we should be posting. Large companies one to two times per day, small companies three to five times per day. Um, so now let's talk about when you should be posting on Facebook. Um, when to post on Facebook uh, is kind of a, a hard thing to talk about because there's a lot, of, a lot of studies that have been done trying to nail down the exact best time to post. Um, but generally speaking, uh, they're, they're all over the place. There isn't a best time to post, but there are times to post that are more effective. And um, so one important thing to consider is that um, 
48% of people in the United States live in the Eastern time zone, and 80% of people in the United States live in the Eastern and Central time zones. And so most companies do work in the Eastern time zone. Regardless of where they're located, they schedule their Facebook posts to fall with times in the Eastern time zone. Um, and so that's where we try to try to post our, our post our posts during. Um, a couple a couple big studies uh, have found that engagement is high on Thursday and Friday from 1 to 4 p.m. on Facebook. Um, so companies, um, people, consumers are more active on Thursday and Friday afternoons. And so companies will try to post during those times to get more engagement, which is more likes, comments and shares. Um, Another recent study done by QuickSprout found that engagement is 32% higher on Saturday and Sunday um, than it is on the weekdays. And so people on the weekends are most active from noon to 1. So again, companies will try to schedule their weekend posts to fall between 12 and 1 p.m. really to get some of that engagement so that their posts will be shared and shown with the most people possible. Uh, studies show that the worst times to post on Facebook are before 8 a.m. or after 8 p.m. And why is that? Well, people aren't on Facebook early in the morning, and they're generally not on Facebook in the evenings. And so if you think about the demographic who uses Facebook, um, everyone is on Facebook. All ages are on Facebook, both genders, both sexes, all races, all education levels. Um, Facebook has over a billion users. Um, and so you, you get a wide audience. Uh, so generally speaking, to hit the most people, you want to post on Thursday and Friday afternoons and Saturday and Sunday afternoons. Those are when your post should really be targeted um, to the audience. So think about your favorite brand's Facebook page um, and go visit your favorite brand's Facebook page. And take a look back over the last two weeks of posts. Uh, that's what I should say. Uh, look at how often your favorite brand was posting and what times they posted on Facebook. And think about if it aligns with what we've discussed today. Or if it doesn't align, why do you think they posted when they did? What can you um, gain from their Facebook posts about their target audience um, and about their Facebook strategy? So that's something that you can think about and discuss in the discussion boards for this chapter. Um, and as you're getting ready to prepare your thoughts for the discussion board, uh, you do need to go into Hootsuite and uh, SCMD 125, and you're going to watch two videos about how companies optimize their Facebook profile pages further. So um, it's going to give you some information on uh, more specific information about how to set up your page for the most engagement and interaction. And you're also going to watch a video on a few tips on creating Facebook pages for increasing engagement among consumers.